The goal of a blockchain consensus mechanism is to align those with the power to produce blocks and those with value at stake for the adoption and the success of the blockchain. This isn't unique to EOS or delegated proof of stake. It's true in proof of work, proof of stake, really most consensus mechanisms. In Bitcoin, ASIC mining hardware, application-specific integrated circuit hardware, is essentially a sunk cost for miners. It can't really be used for anything but Bitcoin mining. Therefore, the cost of that hardware, and also the cost of every kilowatt hour spent mining, is part of their stake in the success of Bitcoin. Clearly then, in Bitcoin, miners have stake. Bitcoin block producers are often assumed to be miners, but that is often not the case. Block producers are often pool operators who built systems to allow individual miners to coordinate and share block rewards. Proof of work is a consensus algorithm that simply uses the mechanism of work, or hashing, as a way to measure the stake of participants over time. Crucially, this concept of mining pools demonstrates that the stake, or the hash power, is separate from those with, for lack of a better term, political power, the block producers. Rather, stake is delegated to the entities who set up the mining pools, who then broadcast the completed proofs of work and who produce the actual blocks. It would be the pool operators, for example, the block producers, not all the miners in Bitcoin who would need to coordinate if they wanted to censor a transaction or something. Proof of work, therefore, can be thought of as very similar to delegated proof of stake. But if a Bitcoin stakeholder or miner wants to delegate their stake to multiple mining pools, their hash power is divided between the pools. To perfectly represent that relationship in a delegated proof of stake environment, it would be necessary to use one token, one divisible vote, which is a coin voting strategy wherein any additional block producers to which a user delegates their stake will divide the total stake between the delegates. Just like mining for multiple mining pools means each pool is only going to get some fraction of your hardware's total mining capacity. But EOS doesn't use one token, one divisible vote. It uses one token 30 votes, effectively multiplying your stake whenever you vote for an additional block producer. <laughs> it's as if in Bitcoin, my mining hardware could work at max capacity in parallel for up to 30 different mining pools at the same time, which obviously doesn't make any sense. Now this trade-off in EOS is made for a good reason. It has to do with preventing Byzantine faults on the network, which I won't get into here, but for that reason, it makes the analysis to determine whether block producers really represent the consensus of those with the most at stake very difficult. So with an ideal consensus mechanism, any decisions made by those given power by the network would perfectly align with stakeholder consensus. In the EOS community right now, there is a growing narrative or meme that the block producers are EOS. That is to say, it is the consensus of the block producers and the block producers only that matters. This is false. And I can give you an example to show you why. Imagine that the block producers reached consensus tomorrow to mint 10 billion new EOS tokens and distribute it among themselves. You wouldn't say, oh, the network reached consensus to mint 10 billion new tokens to the block producers. No. In fact, I expect that that would be sufficient motivation for the rest of the community to coordinate a hard fork that ignores the newly minted tokens and elects 21 new honest block producers. This example is only meant to demonstrate one thing, and that is simply that block producers are not the consensus of the EOS community. They act as a representative of or a proxy for consensus but it is possible for the block producer consensus to diverge from the consensus of the community. And when that happens, which can be very difficult to determine, by the way, it is a failure of the one token 30 vote 
delegated proof of stake consensus model that EOS uses. It's not some intended or acceptable outcome. If the consensus of the network is unclear, to make any decision at all is to risk alienating the majority stake in the blockchain. This could cause that stake to leave, or possibly worse, albeit more difficult to quantify, it could erode the confidence of those currently outside that blockchain, like investors and developers or potential users, who may perceive that the consensus mechanism produces results that are misaligned with the network consensus. To conclude, I want to now talk specifically about the recent situation with B1 and their scheduled EOS vesting. It has been my opinion that it doesn't make sense to gift 10% of a decentralized public blockchain token supply to a private corporation such as B1, and I've been vocally in favor of asking the question to the community about whether this arrangement still makes sense. But my point here is not to advocate for my position on whether freezing B1's EOS token vesting was the right decision or not. In fact, it's almost irrelevant right now. The only relevant question is whether the decision was in fact representative of the consensus of the majority stake in EOS. And I don't think that is clear whether it was or wasn't. That is my claim. And the number and volume of angry personalities in Telegram is not a good indicator of stake-weighted consensus. As the weight of a decision, or in other words, the impact it could have on a community grows, then so too should the effort block producers put into discovering network consensus. We should see polls, we should see on-chain stake-weighted referendums, we should see AMAs, we should see an abundance of communication and feedback when big decisions are being made. We should be striving to maximize transparency and, to the best of our ability, discover the stake-weighted consensus of the community. I did not see this happen. The terms that B1 was asked to sign were essentially leaked in Discord. The code changes in the two multisigs weren't even shown to the community until December 6th. And December 7th was the deadline given to B1. The ENF and the EOS block producers, though I appreciate what I'm sure was a lot of work and cooperation that went into those conversations, they failed to operate transparently and collectively made a big decision when the consensus they represent had not been sufficiently discovered. After all, how could it have been discovered when the community wasn't even given the details to what it was ostensibly reaching consensus on? Again, the block producers may very well have acted in alignment with stakeholder consensus. Really. But who's to say? And that's my point. This shouldn't even be a question on our lips. Okay. What happened has now happened, and I am now looking forward. I look forward to building tools to improve the transparency of the alignment between EOS token holders and block producers. Thanks for listening.